So what I'd like to do is share with you all my, um, my favorite flat earth proof, and that is rivers. Rivers prove that we're on a flat earth and not on a ball, and I'm going to show you how that is. And um, one of the neat attributes about a river is that water flows downhill. So this is a rule that really can't be broken. Um, water does not flow uphill, it flows downhill. So what I'm showing you right here is a picture of a ri river mouth. So here we have, you know, a bay or ocean or sea, and here's the river flowing into it. And what we know, because water flows downhill, is that this water going through here is going downhill, and then at this point, we're at sea level. So all this land behind here has to be above sea level. I'm going to show you how you can't have a river on a ball earth. So let's get into that. One of the first things that we need to do is get on the same page about curvature and what the correct formula is for calculating the curvature of the earth. Um, so you can see here I've put in earth curve calculator and this one right here is my favorite calculator. Uh, it's very useful and it's very accurate. Uh, but I want to show you some misinformation that's out there. And under this, people ask, how much does the earth curve in a mile? This is where most people get stuck. Uh, it says the earth has a radius of approximately 39.65 miles. Using the Pythagorean theorem, that calculates to an average curvature of 7.98 inches per mile, or approximately 8 inches per mile. Well, that's only a partial truth because it's only correct for the first mile. <laughs> After that, it becomes very wrong, and I want to show you that. I want to show you if, if what they were saying there, that the curvature of the Earth is 8 inches per mile, and this is how that would look. So I have this marked out here, 10 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles. I go out 100 miles, and 8 inches per mile. So in the first 10 miles, that would be 80 inches. Uh, and then 160 inches, 240 inches. You see how this is this creates a slope. Okay, eight inches per mile creates a slope. And what you would actually be living on is a cone. If it's eight inches per mile, you'd be living on a cone. All right. You see that? So this right here is the, the actual correct formula, and that is 8 inches per mile squared. And you'll see here that, so the first mile, 8 inches, second mile, 32. So the way you come up with that is 2 times 2 is 4, times 8 is 32. Now they have some decimal points in here. Um, we just sort of round it off. Um, but the important thing is, is that the Earth with a radius of 39.59 is what they say. So just to verify that, 39.59 is, is what Google says the Earth's radius is. Um, that radius from this point to this point, you have to have a calculation that's going to get you so that at this point, you're back at your 39.59. This has this has to equal itself right here. Um, so you can sort of browse through here. You can see that 100 miles, you're at 6,669 feet already of, of curvature. Um, now I'm going to show you how that relates to the river and the river that's right behind my house. So I live on a river. Uh, it's the Colorado River, not to be confused with the one that goes through the Grand Canyon out west. Uh, Texas has its own Colorado River and it runs through Austin, but when they dam it up they call it, uh, they call it lakes. Austin is the last dam uh, before it heads to the Gulf Coast, and so it's a river the rest of the way, and, and I live on that. Um, when I first heard about Flat Earth, I watched a few videos and sort of got 
comprehension of, of what the model was. And it was blowing my mind. So I stepped away from the internet and uh, did some praying and went inside and was asking God for some insight as to whether or not this was true or not. Well, about that time we had a flood and um, I, I found out at that time that I live 400 feet above sea level. And because of the flat earth research that I had done, well, it started to, um, that's where this whole river proof came into mind. So I live around here and the Colorado River goes, this is where it empties into the coast down here. And uh, so let's measure this real quick. We've got about 143 miles. So that is a straight shot line right there. We know that the river is going to twist and turn. The, its course is going to be much longer. But we have 143 direct miles uh, from, where, from where I'm at to the coast. And I sit at 400 feet above sea level. So to help you visualize this, I've got a model for us to look at. Um, this model is relatively to scale. To give you an idea, the, um, you know, the Earth's diameter, according to Google, is 7,917 miles. And... Um, this is scaled so that it's 7,917 feet. So what I've done is just switched miles to feet. Um, and so this is relatively where the Colorado River is entering the Gulf Coast right here. Uh, I drew this circle right here, uh, 143 feet, which with the scaling is 143 miles. This works out pretty accurately. Um, Austin's relatively in this area over here and uh, what you'll see here is that if we're on a ball there has to be curvature everywhere and what I what I did is I aligned you know this vertical axis right through where it enters there so what you'll see here is that on a ball you're going to have this, this curvature. You're always going to be standing at the highest point on the ball. That's, that's how we orient ourselves. We never picture ourselves standing sideways or upside down. We always picture ourselves standing straight up. So this would be a person standing right here where the river mouth uh, enters the gulf. And then looking back towards my house right here, the earth has to curve down. I mean, ball earthers say that a ship going out to sea is going to go over the curvature of the earth, right? So, same is true on land. The land's got to curve down. If we're on a ball, there's got to be curves somewhere. So, this helps you see 143 miles, you're going to have this curvature. So, let me show you where this number comes from. So, those numbers come from here. So we're back at the Earth Curve Calculator. We're going to check this out. We're going to set our eye height to uh, zero because we're going to we're looking at this from where the water of the river enters the Gulf, right down there at sea level. And the distance from the mouth of the river to my house in a straight line is 143 miles. So what that gives us is 13,632 feet of curvature. So H1 is right here, H1. So this is right at sea level. And if the earth is a ball and it curves, this distance, H1 at 143 miles is 13,632 feet. So here I'm at a cross section of the earth. You see here, this is you know, sea level 
around the earth and we'll zoom in here I made some land so you've got your water and then the the land that sticks out above the water that would be your distance above sea level this um, this is the datum line so this is sea level all the way across here here's here's the Rocky Mountains <laughs> so this is your cross section of land your land sticking out above water well if you're standing at the mouth of the river where the river enters the sea or the Gulf or the ocean whatever it enters and you're looking back towards my house 143 miles there's the 13,632 so I'm 400 feet above sea level zoom in here so here's the datum line you come up here 400 feet that would be my house right here it means that my house is 13,232 feet below the coast I mean think about that they say ships moving uh, out to sea right here they say that they go over the curve looking back over the land the land's got a curve down too we always orient ourselves so that we're we're standing vertically perpendicular to the ground on you know, on top of the ground here so looking back towards my house 143 miles the river is 13,232 feet below my feet at the coast okay that means the river has to flow uphill almost the height of the tallest mountain in the United States it's got to flow up that to where I'm at that's not what happens that's not reality we don't live on a ball so here's the way it really is um, the oceans are completely flat all the way across the whole earth we have land masses that stick out of the water and that's measured in feet above sea level and so if we come over here to the coast we've got our person standing by the the river mouth where it would flow into the Gulf uh, my house is 143 miles away from the coast right there the house is um, 400 feet above sea level and what that means is that the river drops 2.8 feet average per mile from my house to the coast and that's typical of, of a slow moving river uh, rivers they have you know anywhere from five to ten feet of drop in a, a mile uh, become you know rap there's rapids and, and they're fast flowing and those are the ones that people go whitewater rafting on but a uh, just nice smooth flowing river under three feet is uh, is typical so the river is just coming downhill water runs downhill we're not on a ball it's just coming down here and it meets the coast at sea level now the other thing I want to do is show you my second favorite proof for the earth being flat and that is the horizon being at eye level well I've got this set up here with this this model this is a perfect time to show you I'm just going to show you that with this tool right here I adjust the the angle of the model right here so you can see the horizon you got the blue up here the sky the green the land this is an infinite flat plane that we're seeing in, in sketch up here this the green and the blue and that's that's the horizon line you can see here that right now the horizon is, is relatively flat to the to the earth there and that uh, now with the hand I'm no longer tilting the the plane up and down but I'm moving moving the earth so I'm going to come in here I'm going to get us positioned on top of the earth like we all you know consider us to be standing on top never never standing upside down or anything like that let's get that horizon right at eye level there we go 
So I'm going to zoom in here like we're standing at the river mouth. Grab the hand. Now picture yourself in a hot air balloon at that river mouth and you're going to you're going to send upwards. So here I'm going to take the hand. Ooh. Look at what happens. As you rise on a ball, the horizon of a ball would always go down below you. Okay? Now this back here, this is the infinite flat plane and that that's not moving. That's standing still. On a ball the ball all around you, as you go up, the horizon would go down. Doesn't matter how much you go up, any amount that you go up, the horizon would go down. It would always be lower. The higher you go, you'd have to look down and down and down. On a flat plane, as you go up, that horizon line always stays the same. This right here, this is, this is modeling that shows how this works horizon goes down on a ball not on a flat plane because this this flat here always extends off into the distance and that's what we see on the earth that we're on